This is the most powerful Mac. And I wanted to like it, but honestly, it's kind of a disappointment. For my use case, anyway. So this review is in the perspective of a game artist. So that's pretty different from what everyone else is reviewing this for, which was photography and uh, making videos and content creation. I did test that a little bit, but that wasn't my focus. My focus was Unreal Engine and the apps that would help make games. And we'll start with the unboxing. Now, the box is cool. It's small, and actually this thing's pretty heavy. It was like 14 pounds. Although cool, the box was missing something. Or two things, actually. There's no keyboard or mouse. And you pay bare minimum $4,000, which to me is insane. Like Apple, you give your users the keyboard and mouse with your $1,000 iMac. You also give your users keyboard and mice on your Mac Pro, which is bare minimum 6,500. So why doesn't this get a keyboard and mouse? Come on. All right, now that the unboxing is done, we can talk about the design. Very small, powerful, and it looks nice. I like the aluminum. You have a UHS-2 SD card slot, so you can use V90 SD cards, no problem. Uh, two USB-C ports at the front. On the back, you get four Thunderbolt 5 ports, 10 gigabit ethernet, power, two USB-A, and HDMI, and a headphone jack and power button on the back, which is great, because who wants a power button on their bottom? It's silly, but now we have to look out for that. This is the base model M3 Ultra. Anyways, other than the CPU and GPU, inside is a one terabyte SSD. It's very fast. It's it's got 96 gigs of RAM, and this is shared memory, which helps a ton in AI workloads. Now, let's get into gaming. Yeah, this was a, <laughs> this was such a big disappointment, because I thought after four years, or is it five now, of Apple Silicon, that more apps would be on it, or more optimized. But that really wasn't the case. Actually, CSGO used to run on iMacs at my school, and uh, with Apple Silicon, you can't play CSGO at all. Uh, they just give you the legacy one when you try to launch CS2, and you can't play multiplayer, you can only play bots. Like, you can't play the most popular shooter on Steam, on a Mac. That's a pretty big loss, and the losses just keep coming. So if you look at the Steam library, I'll pull up the footage right now, uh, you are missing thousands of games compared to your Windows counterpart, which really sucks because uh, there's a lot of good games there if you're wondering here's the specs for the 4090 workstation we have a ryzen 5800x 3d a rtx 4090 and 128 gigabytes of ddr4 memory and holding all the programs is a two terabyte pcie 3.0 nvme ssd uh, the games I did test on the Mac was Minecraft and Baldur's Gate 3. Here's the results. Uh, they're pretty good. It's nice high FPS, but when you compare it with this, the RTX 4090, it kind of gets slaughtered. If you want a game on the Mac, just don't. It, it's not a good experience. What would be a good experience is if Apple took their iOS apps and just put them all on the App Store inside Mac OS. And they can do that because I've seen some iOS apps pop up when you search for stuff on the App Store, but only a few of them, and there's hardly any games. I saw Honkai Impact 3rd, but why is that the only one when you could have Genshin Impact, which is their more popular game? And there's no PUBG or COD Mobile, which are very popular app games. Which is really weird to me because Chromebooks can play Android apps, and they're like $200. So why can't you do that with the Mac Studio? It's definitely possible because this uses the M3 chip, which iPads also use. To me, that just seems like weird market segmentation. All right. Now let's talk about what the Mac Studio was heavily marketed for, which is AI. Honestly, this worked really good 
for text AI generation. The 70 billion model actually ran on this and it ran pretty well. So you can even run the 70 billion model on this. This is the RTX 4090. It can't even run the 70 bill model because it only has 24 gigs of VRAM. Because it has such little VRAM, it can't run it at all, even if you try. Maybe you can run a quantized version with very low context, like 1000 instead of 4000. But when you get down to the lower parameter models, like 7 billion and 12, the 4090 is faster, but it's not by much. So after the text generation, I wanted to test image generation. So I used Comfy UI. And based on the results before, I thought this would do really well. And it was the opposite. It did really badly compared to the 4090. It was four times slower. It took four seconds to generate an image while the 4090 took one. Maybe the program just isn't optimized for Apple Silicon, but that's a pretty disappointing result when this is marketed heavily for AI. Okay, let's talk about game development now. My primary use case, which the Mac failed. Just trying to start up Unreal Engine, there was already friction. Like I couldn't open up Unreal Engine because I needed to install Xcode, which I already had installed, but it would stop me from running it because it didn't find Xcode. Maybe it's because I installed Homebrew through Terminal before. So I had to, I had to change the directory in Xcode through Terminal, which feels like a really Linux thing to do. Like I thought things would be more seamless in macOS, but that wasn't the case for at least setting up Unreal Engine. After that, I got the Xcode running and Unreal Engine opened up. So I put in my project that I was just working on on my Windows machine into the Mac and it was not looking good. Uh, I can put up the footage right now. As you can see, it is really, really weird and wonky, like transparent models and the lighting looks strange, but I took a while to figure that out and I changed the lighting, went into different shaders and render passes. I changed the renderer to the newest metal beta version and that still didn't fix it. It was a shader in the end. So I changed that and everything went back to normal, but it didn't look exactly like the Windows version. It had some weird color casting issues. Maybe that's just because the denoising isn't as powerful or the graphics card isn't as fast as the 4090. So the denoising caused splotchiness because of how much noise was there, causing a color difference. Unreal Engine, it looked cool now, but it was running kind of slow. It felt half as fast as the 4090, which when you look at our Cinebench GPU results, that is actually accurate. I wouldn't recommend paying this much money to get a Mac Studio if you want to use Unreal Engine. Now it works, so if you really like Mac OS and you want to do Unreal Engine development, you can do it, but you're losing a lot of performance for the same price if you got a Windows computer with a comparable GPU. So I, I can't recommend it. It's speed is time and time is money. And you know, I want to make more stuff with my limited time. So it just doesn't work for me. After being pretty disappointed with Unreal Engine, I tested all the other DCC programs. So I, I tested Blender, Blender works great. Maya, Maya works fine. And, but it was actually hard to install Maya. They did not make it easy for a Windows user to download the Mac version for some reason. I had to go way back in the updates page, which is hidden in your support in Autodesk. So it, it was really weird. I don't know why Autodesk does that. Uh, ZBrush works, Unreal Engine works, and Unity works. So if you want to do game development, this is probably the best Mac for you. In conclusion, would I recommend this Mac? If you're a content creator, yeah, I would recommend this. It's really powerful, really small, really cool. And it's actually not that bad of a value when you compare it to pre-built computers. But the thing is, it's not that great at game development, which was what I wanted to do on it.
It works amazing for AI text generation, but not image generation. Maybe further testing needs to be done, but that was my case. But overall, it's just not right for me, and I'm gonna return it. Also, if you do want to get into game development, you kind of should be playing games, and there's not many games on the Mac Store. For those of you looking to get a private AI workstation, this is great. If you don't care about privacy as much and want really fast, easy to use AI, then you could get a subscription. And for the price of this, you can get a pretty long subscription, even if they raise the prices over the years. Though you do give up privacy, which is pretty big con. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, leave a like. And if you want more, subscribe.